Welcome to APCUG's Wednesday workshop, where we get together in the middle of the week to learn more about technology. As this is summertime and we have lots of people making travel plans, going here, going there, our next presentation is very appropriate to help you so you don't lose things. We are happy to have with us again, John Kraut, and uh, he's been one of our featured presenters a lot. And he's kind of a knickknack guy. And today he's going to share with us information about uh, air tags and uh, tiles. And because you're here with us today, at the very end, a special deal offer. So you'll have to wait till the end to find out what that is today. So, John, we're going to turn things over to you. All right. Thank you very much for that introduction, folks. Don't panic about the picture behind me. That's just a photo I shot a couple of years ago when we were lighting up the uh, charcoal in the barbecue. Uh, I just thought it was seasonally appropriate. Uh, for the, Particularly for those of you who joined late, um, you may not know what your name is as shown in Zoom. And I want to mention that if you click participants, the person at the top, the first person listed in that list is you. So you can see if you're only showing your first name and one initial, or you're showing the name iPhone. And I'm sure there's no person in this meeting that is literally named iPhone. But that name is among the participants. So if you don't know what your name is, you can find out in a hurry simply by clicking the participants button. And then you can decide, gee, do I really need to change it? Because otherwise, Judy cannot send me the presentation file, the PDF. So I'll, I just wanted to give you that opportunity to figure out if your name really should be changed. You may not know that. But now you can find out very easily. Um, I'm going to take a moment to start my presentation slide deck, and then I will come right back and uh, share that with you. All right. Let me start it from the first slide. There we go. And now I will come back to the meeting. Aha. Okay, now I'm gonna share it with you. The first slide you're going to see is completely black and that gives me an opportunity to clear away the things that block parts of the slides. I wanna make sure you can see every word, every letter, every illustration. So I'll go ahead and share that. This is not the panic. Uh, this does not mean your computer is malfunctioning or that Zoom is malfunctioning. I'm just using this moment to hide the, the uh, video panel and then hide the floating meeting controls. And that way they won't block your view of my slides. All right, now we'll get to the next slide. Um, as I often do, uh, I have included QR codes in this presentation. If you're not familiar with those, they provide a quick way to access a web page, a PDF document, a phone or tablet app. That's a big part of this presentation or an email you can send or other valuable info. Now, by scanning that QR code on your screen, you can access the info immediately without typing the length of the URL and without typos. The longer the URL, of course, the greater the advantage of QR code scanning over typing because longer URLs make it more and more likely that a typo will show up. If you don't even know what a QR code looks like, here's an example. Now, you will notice on the top two corners and the bottom left corner, there appears a square. QR codes are always uh, square overall and they always contain those three squares in them. So that's how you can recognize a QR code. Now, um, in case you have no idea how to scan such a thing and use the information in it, there is an APCUG YouTube video of my how-to presentation on that very topic. Here's the video URL. Now, the QR code scanning hands-on how-to presentation 
showing you how to use your smartphone to scan a QR code during a presentation like this starts at time point 20 minutes precisely in that video and ends at 32 minutes and 28 seconds. Now, half of it's for Apple, half of it's for Android. So really, by watching this, you're only going to need about seven minutes of your time, and it provides you with a very useful skill. Now, having said that, not all of you know how to do that yet. I recognize that. So I'm going to show you a way to save the slides that have QR codes or URLs in them on your computer immediately during this presentation. And I call this save now, scan later. If a slide contains a QR code, then you can save time by storing the slide containing that code as a screen image file on your computer. And indeed, the instructions for that appear at the bottom of this slide and will appear at the bottom of every slide that has a QR code or a URL during this presentation. And it only takes one second to save a screen image. It's very fast, faster than taking notes. Now, here's how you do it. At the bottom of the screen, it says on the left for Windows, you hold down the Windows key and tap the print screen key. And that will make your screen blink and it will save the current screen image to a subfolder under pictures called screenshots. Now for Mac, if you're using a Mac, you hold down two keys, Command and Shift, and then tap the number three, and that will save to the desktop folder on a Macintosh. After the presentation, then you can display the screen image and scan the QR code at your convenience. You can even wait and scan it after you watch that video and learn how to scan QR codes. So I'm going to re-show you the slide with the URL. Here it is. You can save this slide as well. And using the techniques I just described, and you can see the reminder again is at the bottom of the screen. All right, now let's go on. Our main topic today is tiles and air tags for finding your stuff. And this has turned out to be very valuable for me, but I'm going to show you at the end a case study of a woman who lives actually in my area, Northern Virginia, and who uh, recovered her luggage uh, using these tracking devices. In her case, air tags. Tiles are the senior, which you might call the senior uh, option because they came out several years before air tags were introduced. Now I'm going to take a moment and once again hide the, the uh, floating media controls. There we go. Now, there's a lot of things that you might think of as that important stuff that you might want to find and you can't always find it. Your phone is an, an example, uh, your purse or wallet, your keys, your cameras. Maybe you can't find your car in a parking lot. And then there's the classic one, luggage. And it turns out tiles and air tags can help you find those things, whether they are nearby in your home or in your car, or they are far away. So we're going to look about at how they work. We're going to talk about the Tile Mate and the Tile app, Air Tags and the Find My app for iPhones and uh, iPads, Global Search for Tile or Air Tag property, which is the way that these things first became widely known, because travel writers were writing about people who put a tile or an air tag in their luggage, and when they airline lost it, they used a global search and found it. And that's pretty darn impressive. Uh, there are other models of tiles. Tiles has become, um, they've elaborated uh, tiles into shapes for various purchases. Uh, Robert Mitchell, uh, please put your question in the uh, uh, chat addressed to Julie, Judy Taylor, and we'll handle those at the end of the presentation. Uh, changing a tile mate battery. I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. 
there are limits on Bluetooth range, so your device won't be able to find things immediately, but it will be able to tell you where you last uh, were within range of Bluetooth for any particular tiled or AirTag property. And we're going to talk about surreptitious tracking. This has made some, uh, this has reached uh, uh, the attention of general media a few times over the past couple of years. What this means is somebody that you do not necessarily know or may not want to be involved with has dropped a tile or an air tag uh, into your pocket, your purse, uh, or maybe attached it to your car. And then they use global tracking as you move around to keep track of where you are. Now, of course, you want to avoid that, and I'm going to show you how to avoid it. Uh, now, a few comments about Bluetooth and about the global positioning system, GPS. Bluetooth, as, you, as was mentioned in the prior uh, uh, presentation today, is a short-range radio technology in which two devices are paired, and that allows communication between the two of them. And it, you're gonna find out that uh, all of these uh, tile and air tag devices are indeed Bluetooth devices that can be paired with an app on your phone. Uh, and this is what the word paired means. Your tile or air tag is recognized and ready to communicate with an app on your phone or your tablet via Bluetooth. Now, today you will learn how to connect a new tile or an AirTag to the corresponding app on your phone. After pairing, GPS, which is usually referred to as location services on your phone or your tablet, is a one-way radio technology, and it's used by your phone or tablet to record the location of that tile or air tag whenever the tile or air tag is within Bluetooth range. Now, it won't be accurate down to the foot because your uh, tile or air tag property may be 20 feet away, something like that, but it'll give you a pretty good idea of where your property is when you want to find it. Um, GPS is called location services, as I mentioned, and as a as a general rule, when using these tile or air tags uh, property uh, location uh, devices, you're going to have to keep both Bluetooth and location services running on your phone or your tablet all the time. Um, now, in particular, one of the common misconceptions in this uh, realm is simply that GPS is not built into tiles or air tags. They themselves are not capable of receiving those signals from, from satellites so that they do not themselves know where they are. And the only way to know the locale of a tile or air tag is to satisfy these three conditions. First, your smartphone, smartphone or tablet must have location services and Bluetooth turned on. Second, your tile or air tag property must be close enough to the smartphone or tablet for Bluetooth communication. And for some of these devices, that might be uh, 10 feet, might be 30 feet, uh, might be longer than that. Now, in the case of tile, your tile app must be permitted to use location services all the time, not just when the app is running. Okay, um, my daughter gave me two tile mates for Father's Day in 2020, and that's how I got started on this topic. This is a picture of the tile mate. And uh, obviously it's more or less square, although it has rounded corners. The size is 1.4 inches by 1.4 inches by a quarter inch. It does have a replaceable battery, at least the version I got in 2020 does. And that type is a CR1632 battery, uh, what we call a button battery. Uh, 
you need to replace the battery every year, the free tile app will remind you to do that. Now, as of last year, 2022, the updated tile mate has a non-replaceable battery. However, the vintage 2020 tile mate is still available on Amazon and other sellers uh, as of last week. I checked on the 6th of July. Um, I happen to think that the version with the replaceable battery is a better, a better e approach. It's more economical because replacing the battery is, costs a dollar, whereas something with a non-replaceable battery costs you $20 or more to replace. Now, the tile app, which you use in order to find your tiles or your tiled property, is a free Android or an iOS app. So it runs on Android phones and runs on Apple phones. The app provides three ways to find tiled property. Uh, first of all, if your tile, if your app is if within Bluetooth range of your tiled property, it can make that property or it can make the tile on that property play music. And it will also show the tile signal strength in the sense of cold, warm, and warmer. So if you move around a little bit, you can hear it and uh, your phone will tell you when you're getting really close. Uh, indeed, I had one uh, tile app playing music uh, inside a desk drawer and I could not hear it until I got real close to the desk, but the tile signal strength uh, shown on the tile app led me right to that desk. Um, the tile app can tell you the last known locale of your tile, and indeed, if it's outside of your immediate area, it can show it on a map. Uh, the tile app also lets you initiate what's called a global search, and what that uses is all tile apps on all smartphones and tablets, wherever they are. And if they get close enough to pick up the Bluetooth signal from your, uh, uh, your tile, uh, then they'll let you know where they found it. Now, how to attach tiles to your stuff? Well, I found several different ways. First of all, anything that has an interior, luggage, purse, backpack, cars, lens cases. Um, I put the tile in the interior, but close to the exterior so that it's not being its Bluetooth capability is not being muffled by other things inside. And then again, there's various ways you can use that tile mate hole. Now this is a picture of my digital SLR and I put a split ring on the left side of that so that I could attach a tile. And here you see it. Uh, the uh, other metal construction you, there, you see there other than the split ring is known as a snap hook. And that's what I use to attach my camera strap so that it will not be worn out by abrasion against the tiny little metal piece that the uh, split ring is now attached to on the, on the camera. Uh, that hole is also hand, uh, handy for attaching a tile to a key ring, a dog collar, even a child's belt loop. So if you are in charge of children or grandchildren, then that may be a useful option for you too, because I know um, how easy it is to lose track of a child since I raised three of them. Uh, here's another uh, approach that I have used occasionally, put a small carabiner clip through that tile hole and then you can clip it and unclip it at your convenience. Uh, or uh, this is what I used when attaching um, a tile to uh, my strobe flash that I put on my digital SLRs. Uh, and that plastic tile is something you can easily find uh, at various locations. Now, there are other tile models. This one was introduced specifically for wallets and purses. It is the same size in terms of its uh, width and height as a uh, credit card. It is twice the thickness of a credit card. 
So it fits nicely wherever you would store credit cards. Uh, this is one with a not replaceable battery. It is said to last three years. Once the battery is dead, then you have to buy another one if you want to stick with this approach. There are other forms. This one is called a, st a tile sticker, and it is also a non-replaceable battery, but it has an adhesive back. And so if you wanted to attach it to, say, uh, the back of the screen of a laptop, um, you could accomplish that. Uh, also, this is a, a might be a good alternative for uh, adhesive to a, a part of your car exterior, uh, maybe under a fender. Um, Tile Pro is uh, bigger than Mate, but it's otherwise the same shape and it has a hole through it. Uh, it's also more expensive, but it does allow you to change the battery. Now, what have I placed my tiles on? Well, my car, my daughter gave me a tile slim, uh, I think for Christmas at the end of 2020, and I put that in the glove box of my car. Um, my two luggage pieces, I put uh, a tile in the outer pocket of each of those two luggage pieces. I have three backpacks that I use quite a bit. Uh, I put one uh, a, a tile mate in uh, an outer pocket of each of those. Uh, my car keys and my house keys, I have two separate rings. I've got a, a tile mate on each one. My two digital SLR cameras and my camcorder. Now I used a split ring as I pointed out in the illustration uh, for attaching it to the camera straps in each case. Uh, put one in the bottom of my telephoto lens case, and I put one uh, strapped with the, one of those plastic uh, ties uh, around my strobe flash unit. Those are all very expensive things. I don't want to lose them. Uh, now, Tile has been around long enough that it has uh, reached agreements with some other manufacturers, and those people, those manufacturers are building tiles technology inside select electronic devices. Lenovo and HP build some laptops with it already inside. Dell makes a headset with it already inside. Uh, Bose makes headphones with tile already inside. Fitbit has built it into their watches. And there are others. Now, if you'd like to find out the latest list, you can find that list at this URL I have included the QR code containing that URL. If you want to scan it now, you can, but you can also save this slide using the techniques I, under, I outlined earlier. I've put that reminder at the bottom of the screen, and I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. Okay. Um, now, that should have done that. Um, here's a look at the Tile app. When you run it, typically this is the first screen that it shows up and it will list whatever tiles and the associated property that you have already identified and connected to the Tile app. Uh, in my case, the list is much longer <laughs> than the screen, so I have to scroll down to see all of them. Uh, the find button, which I have circled here for my 19 inch suitcase, uh, means that the tile item is close enough for Bluetooth to work. So you can tap the button to make the tile play music. Um, a re re location reported as nearby also means the tile tile item is in range or very close to being in range. You may have to move around a little bit to make that find button appear. Okay, now at the bottom of the tile app, there are buttons. The first button I circled here at the bottom, uh, which resembles a push pin, displays a map. And that map will show you the last known locales of paired tiles. So, uh, if, the, if you've got one in your car, it'll show you where your car is parked. The second button, uh, the one on the lower right, 
which looks a little bit like an email, it will display notifications. Now, notifications is the critical screen if you've started a global search for one of your tiled properties. And that uh, notification will tell you if somebody has found it and show you a map of where it was found. Uh, the final button on the left is the button that returns to this main screen and it looks like a group of tiles. So think of that as returning to the tiles list. Um, now, how to connect a tile to the tile app. Make sure that Bluetooth is enabled on your device. Keep your new tile nearby within a few inches because you're going to need to touch it in a moment. You start the tile app and notice the plus button in the upper left corner. Touch that button. That begins the process of pairing your tile app with your new tile. And when you do that, it will display this screen, add a device. And what you want to do is tap the green button called activate a tile. When you do that, you're going to see this screen telling you what to do. I have circled the instructions. It says click the tile button to begin activation. It'll play a nice tune. So you need to click that tile button. I circled it here in the picture of the tile mate. And after that, a next button appears. And actually, it is on the screen here. It's not not shown. If you take a look at the very bottom of the activate tile screen, the next button appears. I guess I have to adjust my presentation, don't I? Um, OK, now, once you tap that next button, the tile app will uh, attempt to identify your new tile and displays the phrase activating tile. And when done, the app displays, great, tile is now activated. Tap next to continue. And after you do that, the app displays a long list of possible uses for that new tile. So almost inevitably, you're going to have a use in mind when you buy a new tile. So choose one from the list. Now, the next thing that comes up is, can tiles be registered on multiple devices? And the answer is yes, you can do that. And in fact, you don't have to hold, you don't have to do an activate on device number two. Instead, you create, you install the app on the second device and, and on your first device, you create a tile account. It's free. You don't have to pay any money for it. When you have the app on the second device, you can register the app using the same account. And on that second device, when you register on uh, that second account with the same account ID and password, then the tile app on that second device automatically loads all the tiles associated with your account. So when you add a new tile, you're recording it on the tile app servers and not just on your phone or tablet. And that's how they can automatically transfer all of them when you use a second device with the same account ID and password in the tile app. So that's especially useful if your phone is broken or stolen. Now, the 2002, 2022 Tile Mate, I mentioned that earlier, it has a greater Bluetooth range than its predecessors. And Tile says the Tile Mate battery, which is non-replaceable in that 2022 version, will last three years. Um, now, when I found that out, I bought six 2020 tile mates, bought them on Amazon. And as of now, only one current tile model does include a replaceable battery. And the emphasis here is on current tile model. And that's the expensive Tile Pro. Now, let's take a look at the other kid, the new kid on the block, so to speak, 
it was introduced in 2021 and it has a non-replaceable battery. And I think that is what inspired Tile to bring out an updated Tile Mate in 2022 with a non-replaceable battery. Uh, it's similar to Tiles in many ways. First of all, it's a disc shape. Second, there's no hole in the ear tag body, which means if you want to attach it to something, you need to put a put it in a case. And see here you see a case that includes a split ring. And the, uh, Apple and third parties sell the straps and the cases like the case you see here. I, AirTag can be located using both the iCloud.com web page and the Find My app on your Apple devices. Apple says its global search option uses all iPhones and iPads, not just those with Find My on them. I kind of think that it won't use older iPhones where the, uh, the uh, Find My app cannot run, but that's a limited uh, number of devices still in use around the world. Now, how to connect an AirTag to the Find My app. Um, there are instructions inside the AirTag box and here they are, I've quoted them verbatim. Update to the latest iOS or iPad OS. Turn on Bluetooth on your device, then pull the tab. That was a little bit ambiguous to me. Here's what I found when I uh, opened the box with my AirTag in it, it had plastic wrapped around it. I had to unwrap the plastic and the plastic is attached to the little pad that separates, that makes it impossible for the battery to start working. When you pull out that tab, the battery starts working and that's what you need to do, but you can't do it. You can't even see the tab until you completely unwrap it. Now, it's, then it says, hold near your, your uh, iPhone or iPad, near your device and follow on-screen instructions that appear on the device. You also have to turn on location services. Um, here I've depicted the wrapper unwrapped and uh, that made it possible for me to find the tab. And it certainly was not obvious when I opened that box. Um, now, here's what popped up on my phone, which was at the time running iOS 15.1 when I, uh, followed that procedure and pulled the tab out of my AirTag. Um, it popped up this message that said AirTag with one button, connect. So you tap that button. Uh, then it presented a scrolling list. You scroll up and down to find a desired purpose for the AirTag. Once you selected that, again, you tap continue. Uh, the third thing, is to register, oh, and I thought that box was gonna block my uh, email address and my phone number. It didn't, I'll have to fix that. Um, you register your AirTag to your Apple ID and then tap continue again. Uh, you do not have to state your Apple ID, it gets that from your phone. And finally, uh, it provides a name and it, it says it's setting up, that may take a minute or two. Once that done, the pop-up just disappears from your device. Here's, uh, actually it doesn't. It opens uh, the, uh, the uh, Find My app. It displays the, um, the name of the device. And it reminds you that you have several options when you want to find it, including just asking Siri to find it for you. Um, you click the Done button and you're all set. Okay, um, now Find My App will show you a map, including the last locale of your AirTag. It will also allow you to uh, find the um, AirTag and cause it, by causing it to play a sound. One thing that the AirTag does not have is a button. And one thing I didn't mention about tiles 
is that if you double tap the button, it will make your phone make a sound. So with tiles, you can use the tile to find a lost phone. Um, and of course, as is true with uh, the tile app in the Find My app, you can initiate a global search for your AirTag, uh, which is especially useful for lost luggage. Um, based on my experience with tiles and my Android phone, I think it's necessary to keep the location services and Bluetooth running constantly on Android. And that gives you the greatest opportunity to stay up to date with the position of your tiled property, whether it's in your house, your car, in your wallet, whatever. Um, the tile app on iOS says it can keep track of tiles even when the app is not running. But again, you have to keep location services and Bluetooth running constantly. Now, if you want to force your tile to make a sound, you uh, first of all, you run the tile app. Second, you tap the tiles button to display all your tiles. And any tile that has a green find button, you can tap that and it will start playing music immediately because it is within Bluetooth range of your phone or tablet. Um, so you tap the find button of the tile you want to hear. You listen carefully for the sound. It's not loud, or at least not for seniors who have attended a lot of rock concerts. Let me put it that way. It's not loud. Um, now, I actually gave this away a moment ago. Find your phone or your tablet using your tile. You double tap the tile button on the tile itself, and that will force the installed, the phone on which you've installed tile to play a sound, and it's pretty loud. Now, having said that, you do not have to have the Tile app running on that phone in order to be able to find the phone. It will make a sound anyway, even if the Tile app is not running at the moment you double tap the Tile button on the Tile. Um, now, the next question is how to turn off that phone once you, or turn off that sound on the phone once you have found it, and the answer is, tap the phone's on off button. Okay, now let's look at the Find My app. This is what we use on Apple devices for uh, finding air tagged property. And it's uh, pre-installed. It, it's part of the standard set of uh, uh, apps that Apple installs on all such devices. The app enables you to find both AirTags and any other iPhone or iPad that's also registered to your Apple ID. And indeed, you can do all of that through iCloud for that matter. Um, now, here's a look at uh, the AirTag app, and we're going to find out how to make it play a sound on your AirTag. So you'll see a list, and here I only have one item in the list, of things that ha uh, have been uh, registered uh, on your phone with AirTags. And if you do not see that list, you need to tap this button at the bottom of the Find My Screen, the button labeled Items. In the list, you tap the named item that you wish to find, and it will display uh, a screen devoted to that particular item. And in that screen, a very, very prominent button is labeled play sound. Tap that. And your air tag will start playing a sound. Now, let's look at a specific example that is important to a lot of people. Find your car in a public parking lot. Um, the app uses location services on the phone or tablet to record the last known locale of each air tag or tile. Now, having said that, keep in mind that if you park at the bottom of a multi-story lot, probably GPS is not going to be working very accurately because there's a lot of concrete between you and those GPS satellites in the sky overhead. So, works best when you're uh, your view of the sky is unobstructed. 
Um, now, I had recommend that you start the app you're using, either Tile or AirTag, before you leave the car, uh, or more accurately, before you walk away from the car. Uh, the app can lead you to your tiled car because you can confirm that it knows where your car is at that time. You can confirm it by seeing it within the app. And so you do that by, uh, what I suggest you do is confirm that by using the app before you leave the car. So your tile app definitely says you know where it is. And then you can use the app to lead you back to the car when you exit shopping or whatever else you're doing. And as I said previously, it works best in a parking lot open to the sky. Um, uh, let's see here. AirTag property, uh, using AirTag to do this is almost identical to using, uh, using Tile to do this, to track your car. So um, once again, when you get out of the car, you start the Find My App and make sure that the Find My App shows the car in the place where you have just parked. And then you can use the app to come back to the car, to lead you back to the car, because you have definitely confirmed that the app knows where your car currently is when you leave it. So when you come back, you can use the app to find it again. Again, it works best in a parking lot open to the sky. Now, this is the topic that really made Tile famous to the world or at least to the traveling public, because many people put tiles in their luggage and when the airline lost the luggage, a global search literally told the owner and the owner told the airline where the luggage was. Now, here's how we do it with tile. In the tile app, you tap the tiles button to display all of your tiles, tap the name of the tile you want to search for, and this screen appears. If it's not within Bluetooth range, it'll say this tile is not within range. And uh, as you might guess, you, you tap notify when found. And there I circled the button for you, and that initiates a global search, which means that every user of a tile app will have their phones search for the identity, the known identity of the tile that is not within range. Now, do they know that it's being done? No, they don't. Incidentally, uh, Occasionally, when you have the tile app running, it'll pop up and say something like, in my community anyway, it'll say something like, there are 4,722 tile users within your area. Now, I don't know what within your area means. My guess is that it's a mile. Um, but yes, I live in a very crowded suburb. So some of them could be my neighbors. Some of them could be in cars just passing by. Um, but the point is that uh, when your item is found, uh, the notifications button in the app will show you that you have a new notification and then will show you where it was found. Um, in AirTag, you tap the items button, you tap the named item you want to find, and you scroll down to the screen to the lost mode heading and you tap the enable button. And here's what lost mode looks like. And you tap the continue button and that starts the global search for your air tagged property. Now, um, as I mentioned previously, uh, 
Finding lost luggage is what made tiles famous in the first place. And later, uh, air tags had some uh, very widely publicized successes finding lost luggage. Um, and as you can guess, travelers who luggage included a tile or air tag and were uh, and they found their luggage uh, using the global search were overjoyed and very willing to talk to media. Many travel writers now consider tiles or air tags to be essential for travel. Indeed, the most recent article on uh, uh, essential uh, travel accessories on CNN.com specifically measured, uh, mentioned air tag, which showed that the writer was an iPhone user, but uh, the over the years, the articles have mentioned both tiles and air tags as essential travel accessories. Now I'm gonna mention one particular story that showed up recently on CNN and it happened to involve Northern Virginia, the area where I live. I live in Arlington County. This involved a woman who lived in Fairfax County, the big kahuna next door to us. Here's the story, there's the URL, I've given you a short form URL for it. And yes, here's the QR codes that you can scan to go straight to that page. And you can uh, use the uh, save now scan later instructions at the bottom of the screen to save this for later. Uh, in this particular case, the device included in the luggage was an AirTag. The airline did find the luggage and got it to, I believe it was Dulles Airport. And the traveler opted, uh, when the airline contacted the traveler, the traveler opted to have the airline deliver the luggage. And this is where the story got interesting. The airline handed the luggage to an individual independent contractor to deliver to the traveler, but the luggage was not delivered. Now, what did happen? Well, guess what? The traveler started a global search and was able on the map in the Find My app to see the contractor car carrying the luggage moving between a local apartment house and a McDonald's back and forth for a few days. Now, the traveler went to the apartment house and guess what she found around the trash bin? discarded luggage from other travelers, emptied out. And since they had um, IDs on the luggage, she let them know what she had found. The traveler also gave the info about her luggage to the airline and asked for prompt return of her luggage. And the airline did not help. I was flabbergasted. The airlines want to be known for customer service but this airline did not help. Then she went to the police with the same tracking information and asked the police for help. And guess what? The police did not help. I think I can understand that. They're generally a uh, little bit busy all the time these days. Then the traveler went to the apartment house with a TV crew because she got one of the local television stations interested. She also told the airline what was going, what she was doing with that TV crew. And that meant the airline really had to get off its uh, rear end and accomplish something useful. And this is what they did. They hired a courier, had the courier pick up the luggage from the individual contractor, and the courier showed up at the point where the traveler and the TV crew were at the apartment house and handed the luggage to the traveler. Now, I hope the rest of us don't have to go through that much grief to recover luggage from an individual contractor. But the real lesson here is, if the airline gives you an option to have the luggage delivered to your home, don't use it. Go to the airport and pick up the luggage there. That cuts out the middleman who might not be doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now, as I said, I like the versions of Tile Mate that allow you to replace the battery. So I'm gonna show you, first of all, 
how does the Tile app tell you when the battery needs to be replaced? And the answer is, you can see it here scheduled, uh, circled for my geocaching backpack. The Tile mat in that needed a uh, battery replacement when I uh, captured the screen capture to show you. And the battery on the back of the tile mate is under a sliding panel. The panel looks like this. Just uh, press firmly with your finger and pull it away from the center of the tile mate and it'll come off. And after you replace the battery, you must tell the tile app that you have done so. You tap on the individual item and it will have a button that says, I've replaced the battery. And by golly, there's the message. Actually, I should have moved the circle up to the where it says I've replaced this battery. It's just above the red circle instead of inside it. Um, now, there are limits to Bluetooth range. Uh, one of the alleged advantages of Tile Pro is it has a much greater Bluetooth communications range than a standard Tile Mate. Uh, but keep in mind you know, uh, where you put them is very important. It's not designed to po uh, punch through multiple ridges of, uh, or even a single ridge of uh, uh, the terrain. It's not designed to punch through hills or forests or sheet metal or multiple walls. Bluetooth range is also affected by the number of other active Bluetooth devices nearby, such as other tiles, uh, but also computers, and uh, other air tags. And even one of those common Bluetooth devices, earbuds can interfere, although they are very low power. Um, the range is quoted by Tile for its models and by Apple for air tags are probably what we call line of sight. And what that means is they tested it on a flat wheat field with no other Bluetooth device or radio source in that field. So in reality, your range is going to be less. How much less? It depends. Depends on how much interference and so forth. All right, now other uses for tiles and air packs. If you buy a cover for your US passport, that's a good place to put a tile slim, for instance. Uh, laptops, tile stickers can work well on laptop. Pet collars. If you let a collar out, if you let a pet outside and it jumps the fence, it's pretty good idea to have an, a tile or an air tag on that pet collar. Uh, maybe your favorite clothing, your jackets, things that uh, maybe don't always end up in the same place when you get home. Uh, any medicine that you need in a hurry, for instance. Uh, and I mentioned children and grandchildren uh, already in this presentation. Uh, even their favorite toys, if they throw a tantrum when they can't find their toy, you may want to be able to find it in a hurry. Um, now, the last thing on the agenda was surreptitious tracking. And this is a slide that uh, essentially provides a summary. Uh, I mentioned surreptitious tracking uh, at the start. Uh, some general media uh, columnists have reported, and one in the Washington Post in particular, has been um, harping on this subject for a while. And what I found so amusing about it was that he uh, didn't bother to look at what could be done by an individual to find out if somebody has tagged themselves or their car without their knowledge. And there are apps for that. They were originally designed to find misplaced earbuds but they will identify all Bluetooth devices within range of the phone or tablet on which the app runs. Uh, one of them for Android devices is called WonderFind. One of them for uh, Apple iPads and iPhones is called Bluetooth Inspector. And you see the icon here. Uh, you search for Bluetooth Inspector in uh, the Apple App Store, but on your phone, it's known as BT Inspector as you can see here. All right. Now, um, I have mentioned several apps today 
uh, that you might want to obtain for your devices. And so I'm going to show you a slide for each one of them. First of all, the tile app itself on the left is uh, a, a QR code, which when scanned will take you directly to the Apple App Store page for the tile app. On the right, when, uh, if you scan with your Android phone, uh, this one will take you directly to the Google Play Store page on which you can download the Tile app. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to save this screen so that you can scan later if you wish. Frankly, I don't think you need these QR codes because Tile is a nice short word that you can search for uh, using the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. But here it is, I like to be consistent. Now, uh, the Android WonderFind app. Uh, here you can uh, scan the QR code. You can save this page for later scanning. And the idea is that the WonderFind app will identify all Bluetooth devices of whatever brand that are nearby. And then you can check your car and you can check your purse and so forth. Uh, maybe a winter coat to see if somebody slipped an air tag or a uh, tile app or tile into any of those places. If you happen to use an iPhone or iPad instead, yes, there is an app, as I mentioned earlier, Bluetooth Inspector. And here it is. Uh, again, this will identify any device, not just a branded device. Uh, for instance, the, um, fine, uh, the Apple phones will now identify all air tags nearby, but to be certain that no tile is nearby, Bluetooth Inspector will help you find those as well, because it will find anything that is a Bluetooth device nearby. Now, I added a, a couple of slides this morning. Unfortunately, I didn't have the best news on the AirTag front. As it happened yesterday in Amazon Prime Day deals, they had a deal on AirTags in a four pack for about $22 each. They cost almost $30 when purchased individually at full price. And I, I wrote here, apparently it was good only yesterday on Amazon Prime Day, uh, I checked this morning and it wasn't there anymore. There's better news for Tile. Last night, Tile sent out an email promoting something that they call a warehouse sale. And for the first time since 2022, they are listing Tile Mate. And in this case, it's cut by half, more than 50% off. Um, Tile Mate is now available for $12. As you can see, I circled it here on the Tile webpage for their warehouse sale. Um, and I think, I mean, that's a much better deal than I ever found on Amazon uh, on Prime Day or otherwise for Tile. Uh, and the 2020 version is the one that allows you to change the battery. Uh, I have occasionally wondered if the battery uh, in the older ones I purchased would already be dead when they arrived here because these were put in the warehouse a couple of years ago. Apparently they, they work fine. Um, I've never had a problem with buying uh, the 2020 version. So now you can get it at a very deep discount. Uh, it also, um, when I went on to the the web page, it also popped up. I didn't capture the image here for you. It also popped up an offer for an additional 15% discount. I don't know. I didn't try to investigate it. I don't know what the details are. I don't know if you have to buy a lot of them in order to get a 15% discount. Nonetheless, it's worth looking into. Okay, I'm at the end. I'm going to stop my screen share and then we will take your questions. Hey, John, absolutely fantastic presentation. 
Thank you. As I told John Kennedy in chat, uh, I have a tile and one of the things that you put in your wallet. And back in the day, I would buy tiles as presents for the digital photo contest winners, et cetera, website, you know, you name it. And I, one time I bought myself a set. Well, I just opened it during your presentation and thought, ha, huh, I bet the battery's dead. But with your last statement about that 2020, I bet those batteries are still working. So thank you very much. I certainly hope so. Uh, I, the last time I bought them was about a year ago. Because of the current warehouse sale, I'll probably buy a couple more. Um, I've been thinking, I have one tripod, which is stolen would be an outrageous price, 700 bucks to replace. And I bought it when I was working for a living so I could afford it. Now I'm retired. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a tile on that, uh, definitely on that tripod. Um, uh, do we have questions in chat? Yes, we do. I have one for Ray. Who does the accounting for all the residuals? Also, what about Sirius XM as an option? Is Ray still on? Um, I will comment on the Sirius XM thing. I was a Sirius XM subscriber for about five years. And I wrote them emails suggesting, uh, uh, particularly for the channels that covered uh, 70s music, I wrote them emails suggesting other bands that they should include because I thought their format, for those of you who know something about radio, I thought their, for their playlist was kind of limited. Uh, it focused a lot on people that I respect, but there were other bands I thought they should include, and they didn't even respond to the emails. So eventually, I gave up on SiriusXM, and I installed an app on my phone called V Radio, Virtual Radio. And that app has one feature that I think everybody who's interested in music would really like to take advantage of. They provide a curated list of internet radio stations that you can access for free, no subscription fee ever. And they, they organize it by music type and other programming types like news, for instance. Uh, so if you wanna hear uh, music from say Lithuania, or you wanna hear music from 70s progressive rock bands, they have those lists of stations and you can listen to them for free. Um, so that's something I'd recommend if you're really tired of paying money to listen to music, uh, particularly using a phone in your car. And I have enjoyed hours and hours of driving around the U.S. Uh, with my phone uh, playing various radio internet radio stations for me. Uh, it does impact your data uh, limit on your cell phone plan if your plan has a data limit. Mine does not. Okay, a uh, cu couple of comments. Oh, a question. Are Samsung tiles good? I have not bought the Samsung version. Uh, basically, here's what I tell people when, when they ask me questions like this. What, uh, there are, there's limited, uh, at least 50 companies, maybe more, that make competitors for tiles and air tags. What you want to do is buy something that A, is compatible with your phone, and for Android, that means tile, and B, buy something that is so widely used that the global search is going to work for you. A lot of these tiny little companies with these Me Too uh, devices, they don't have a large installed base of users the way that Tile does and the way that AirTag does. So I recommend Tiles for Android users and either Tile or AirTag for Apple users simply because they can do the global search and be effective with it. And most of the other companies can't and that includes Samsung. The one place that Samsung's likely to work well is in Co South Korea because they're a South Korean company and they have a huge installed base in South Korea. I have two helpful comments for people who might be going out and buying things. Tile tags, 
called tie, wrap, tie wraps. They're small wraps suitable for using tile tags and they're at Walmart in the automotive section. So you might check that out. And another comment is I have a wallet that holds an air tag, bought it at Amazon. And that's the last of my questions. So we're going to open it up and first person is George from Canada. Hi, my screen says chat's disabled and it says it has been saying that for quite a bit of the presentation. Don't know if it's a common problem. Um, the other question I have is, uh, could you put up the slide address again or put it in the chat so we can copy it? I didn't get to my Windows print screen in time. And you had a you had a link to the whole presentation of that uh, right at the beginning. That was the presentation on how to scan oh, a okay. QR code. Okay. That's not this presentation. This presentation will be made available to you in a couple of days. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I, and I guess to... Samsung does have some kind of special thing for their phones that give you closer resolution, greater resolution. Uh, I don't know about it. It was Dorothy. Who asked I'm sorry. Greater resolution in what sense? In getting to the, the, the distance and locating it in the room. <laughs> well, that's um, a problem, right? You can't find. You, you know, you know it's nearby, but you don't know where near. Um, I don't think Samsung has any technical advantage there whatsoever. Okay. Uh, Blue, Bluetooth is Bluetooth. GPS is GPS. Neither of those belong to Samsung. Thank you. And I do have to let everybody know, Roy, uh, Ray did let me know that he hoped that he uh, didn't lose his internet connection where he is. So that's, po that's probably what happened with Ray. Carl, your turn. Uh, thank you. Uh, excellent presentation. I did not know anything about air tags and uh, my comment about those the small uh, tie wraps they're only about two or three inches long they're very soft they're small and uh i use them for a lot of uh things where i don't you know, most of the time you know they're the large six inches or eight inches they're pretty stiff for holding heavy things but the ones at walmart i'm pretty sure in the automotive might be sports but i'm pretty sure they come in a small package not very big and very inexpensive, like less than $2 for 25 or something. But my question is, I installed Wonderfind. And to my surprise, I have five things that found. One was a HP, a Samsung, something with a very long, uh, looks like a hexadecimal code, an Ericsson and an Amazon. And it's saying the first three are now, and the other two were two minutes ago. What it, What is this telling me? <laughs> on my phone for Wonderfine. Um, have you been moving around in the last couple of minutes? No, since I installed the app, no. Okay. Now it, it, well, changed, the time is changing on some of them from two minutes to three minutes. The um, three of them are now. The, um, the one that's referencing Samsung may be referencing Samsung earbuds. Do you have Samsung uh, wireless earbuds? No, I, but a good question. Thank you. I have a Samsung watch. That's probably what it's detecting. Uh, that's what the, the Samsung item is probably a Samsung device such as earbuds or a watch. So you've got that answer. Um, and for HP the others, might be, my, might be my printer. I have several HP printers. Uh, your, do you have an HP laptop? Uh, no, no. Okay. Well, um, it's, I can imagine that HP has printers with uh, uh, Bluetooth installed. I, I can't, I have an HP printer. Mine does not have Bluetooth installed. I know that. But oh, that, you're, you're so, right, because I think there is a direct connection to, to the yeah. printer, which probably is a, a Bluetooth. Well, it's partly Bluetooth and it's, pro, it's partly uh, email based. Uh, it depends on how you set up your printer, whether or not it'll use that email connection. Mine doesn't. It was available on mine, but I, I decided I didn't want 
to have everything loop through HP servers to get to my printer. So my printer is uh, available on, on my home network only. What what are these other ones? One There's two of them. I got another one popped up while talking to you. And they're saying now. And one's like a hexacode. The other one says OS42. Does that mean one of my neighbors has one of these tags? Uh, it depends on how distant they are. But yes, it's, it's, there's a pretty good chance. Now it, now, it may also be that the neighbors have a computer with Bluetooth enabled, a car with Bluetooth enabled. Yeah, it's not showing up consistently, so I, I let's not worry about seeing that. But uh, uh, yeah, you're detecting things that are nearby that happen to belong to other people. Well, that's the point of recommending Wonder uh, WonderFind and BT Inspector. The idea is if somebody leaves an air tag or a uh, or a tile in a position to track you surreptitiously, you can find it using these apps well can and, i walk can i walk around and determine if i get closer yeah. to it or something uh, no, try it try it i i do believe that it will give when you get particularly close to something it'll tell you that it's very close by in fact it might rank the list by with the closest one i really ought to start at my phone and take a look it might rank the list with the closest one at the top of the list and then down in that order I think you're right. Yeah. Now, this is how you should uh, participate in one of our Wednesday workshop presentations. Do what is being shown on the screen so you have hands-on experience with the presenter's words. And I often wonder, thank you, Carl, for doing that, if people think about doing stuff. I do it all the time. And uh, it's amazing how you retain so much more of it. And I'd do it more often if I didn't have my several screens up here. Jerry Crow, it is your turn. Good morning. I, uh, whoops, I thought I'd turn on my camera. Yeah. There we go. Um, I wanted to mention only quickly what Ray mentioned about Android Auto. I have a, a Toyota with, and I have an Android phone. And, and what I find extremely useful, about the only thing I use Android Auto for, because I'm not into being able to do music and everything from, but I have a console screen with a display, of course. But I can hook up Android Auto and I can load Waze, W-A-Z-E, which Google also owns. Now my partner, she's, she's maniacal about Waze. She uses it all the time. I'm not using an app on the phone to drive around. But the beauty of that is there's an awful lot of information on a Waze display about what's going on on the roads, what the names of the roads are. And if you hook that up, you can just tap Waze on Android Auto and it'll bring that screen up, that Waze mapping, tracking navigation screen up on your on your dash. I use that all the time when I'm going someplace that I'm not sure where I'm going, so. I, um, I had to take my daughter to Boston to do college shopping back in 2006. And I, I went to school there in the 70s. And the one thing I was sure of when I went to school is I never wanted to drive in Boston ever. It's a very old city. It has a lot of one-way streets and, and unique intersections. And do you know with that, uh, what I did the night before we left, I bought a Garmin uh, car GPS and I have been hooked on it ever since because I had zero trouble navigating in Boston because I had that thing and today, Waze and Google Maps largely provide the same capability. And as you guys have noted, it's usually on a smaller screen. But with Android Auto and uh, Apple Auto, you can put it on the big screen if your car has one. And that's a real advantage. I continue to use my car GPS just because I got in the habit way all those years ago. And... Um, by the way, the car GPS has cost a lot less than they used to, but you have to manually take it in the home, plug it into your computer and update it to get the latest maps. That's the big disadvantage of the approach that I use now. Um, on the other hand, I don't, I use my, uh, my uh, phone in the car for a couple of other purposes, and I don't wanna have to switch back and forth between screens on the phone 
to get them all done on the phone. So I like to have a separate device for each purpose. And for me, the car GPS is the best thing you can get. I have recently decided that I'm gonna spend extra money and get the version that shows me live traffic conditions because Google Maps and Waze are very good at that. And that was one thing that baffled me in, in uh, I did use Google Maps to get from uh, Providence back to Cambridge the last time, well, it wasn't the last time, it was 2015, but it uh, up there in, uh, in the New England area. And in Cambridge, it was rush hour and it had me make, make 18 turns in the space of a mile. And the reason is it was constantly adjusting the plan based on changing traffic conditions. How does it know the traffic conditions? There's dozens of other people around you in other cars also using Google Maps. That's how it knows. Um, David, it's your turn. Hi, John. Hi, John. I wanted to say great presentation. Uh, Thank you. While you were talking, I went up on the tile store and bought the four pack of the uh, 2020 tiles for about $35. So they're going in all my luggage when we travel. Now think about that folks, four pack for 35, that's less than $10 each. That's a real good deal. John Metcalf. And I do want to let you know that Ray did get kicked out off his internet, but he is in back if, back if you have some Ray questions. Okay, I just have a quick question. Uh, my daughter bought a, I think it's a tie, I don't know what brand it is, to put on the dog's collar, because she loves to run and we don't want her getting out. But anyway, every so often that thing just rings for no particular reason. And um, I just wondered if... Uh, okay, so, I have a guess, and this has happened to me. Um, if I happen to have the Tile app running and I put the phone in my pocket without shutting down the screen, it's the equivalent of a pocket dial. And that is it, uh, it effectively clicks one of the tiled property items that I have that's listed in the app. And it makes the, uh, makes the uh, particular uh, tile uh, make a noise. And so my guess is something similar is going on there. I can't swear to it, but well, we've, had it happen, we've had it happen when my daughter isn't even home. And um, well, it's then then obviously she has the appropriate app on her phone and somehow it's being activated. So it rings the tile. Right. Well, um, then it's just kind of annoying. It only happens occasionally, but well, be glad it doesn't happen every five minutes. <laughs> um, Steve I Parker, no. You're on. Yeah, hi. Um, if you found one of these surreptitious tags or uh, tiles, is there a way to reverse track to see who it was registered to or where it came from? You would have to take that up with the tile company uh, or Apple in the case of an air tag. I am, there may well be a way. They may have privacy concerns, but uh, I suspect some applicable state or federal laws have been violated. And um, then it would be appropriate for the company that that keeps track of who whose devices belong to whom uh, to let law enforcement know. Who, uh, who owns that particular tag that was surreptitiously placed, uh, whether it's an air tag or a tile. Now, I have never tried to do that because I've never found one attached to me, maybe because I'm as old as I am, nobody cares about me anymore. I, mean, I don't work for a company that has any security concerns anymore. One day uh, when I was working for Unisys on a very, very security high security uh, uh, project for a foreign country. Uh, three of us went out to lunch at a, a local cafe near where we worked. And just out of the blue, after about 20 minutes, the guy next to us mentioned the project. He didn't know us, we didn't know him. 
but he knew us well enough to recognize us and try to strike up a conversation. Well, we were taught to shut down when we ran into such things and we didn't, we didn't respond. We stopped talking about everything. Actually, we finished our lunches and walked out of there. Um, but the point is, it's not just an admirer that you don't want to encourage that might surreptitiously track you. It could be done for what we call business espionage purposes. And uh, again, it hasn't happened to me and maybe it won't ever again because I'm retired, but it can happen. I live 35 miles northwest of Los Angeles in the Santa Clarita Valley. And it's been, been written up in our local paper a couple of times that women have been followed home directly to their driveways. One was accosted and the cops were right. We have sheriff's departments. They were right on it and let everybody know that this is what can happen. And it was a uh, positive outcome for everybody involved because it alerted everybody who take that who takes that newspaper about what could happen yep. with a tag. So over to you, Donna. Unmute. John, I have one tile connected to a medical device. I would rather get a slim. So how can I take the one that's connected off? Do I just delete tile? Or good, good question. It turns out I've done that recently um, because of this. Let's, I don't know if I can show it to you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, over in front of my face. Right. This okay. is the cover from the back of a tile mate. And okay. it just fell off one day. And so I, I bought a new tile to put on the, on, on the device. In this case, it was one of my cameras. Uh, and yes, the tile app does allow you to deregister a tile. So if you want to put a uh, slim on it instead of a tile made or a tile sticker or whatever you've got, yes, you can deregister that one and then register the new one and hold on to the one that you deregistered because you may find a new, new use for it somewhere else. And then you can re-register it. Okay. Do I do that with the tile app? Yes. Okay. Next question was, I tried to find your four tile mates on the warehouse. I can't find that. <laughs> no, uh, I, I, I looked for it and I could not find it. Uh, oh. the, uh, I'm not sure where that other participant in the meeting bought his, uh, but it, I don't think it was uh, on the tile website. Uh, the last time I bought a set of four, it was on uh, Amazon. Okay, well, I went to Amazon Warehouse thinking that's what you were referring to. I couldn't find it anywhere. No, so I, I couldn't find it. Uh, I looked again on. this morning to try to find the, the four pack of, of uh, 2020 uh, tile mates on their warehouse sale, and I could not find it. I looked at it. Uh, the first time I, I saw the email and looked at the site was last night at about 1 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, and um, it's not there, but that deal on a single tile mate from 2020 is a real good deal. I think it's wonderful that you can still replace the battery. And what I really love is if the medical device is separated from the phone, that double click will help me find the phone or the yep. phone can find yep. it. I mean, so that, I think that, it's a wonderful thing for, for personal use. That button seems like <laughs> such a simple concept and yet it is so useful. <laughs> um, and, and because we all lose our phones, you know, particularly, yes. <laughs> uh, particularly when they were really small, we, we could easily lose them. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I think the, uh, the button is a, a major advantage in the tile compared to the air tag. Thank yeah. you. I enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. You're on and mm -hmm. I love to see you taking notes like I do. <laughs> I, I just want to break back. If you go to the tile site, off to the right hand side, towards the right hand side, there's a sale box. Take that and go all the way to the bottom. And uh, that's where I was able to find it. Okay. Well, 
I've, as it turns out, I got the warehouse steel page up right now, um, but I will uh, definitely look at that because believe me, if I could buy four for less than 40 bucks, that's outstanding. Kevin, again, it's your turn. Well, John, save some for me. Can, oh, can you hear me? <laughs> yep. Okay, great. I'm on my phone with a headset in a restaurant. And I'm not sure. Okay, first of all, John and Ray, love the presentations. My wife just bought a couple of tiles. I don't even know if they've come to the house yet. I did a bunch of research ahead of time, but having you step us through it was super. Ray, I just enjoyed all the music. Um, uh, the battery indicator, John, um, based on what you said, and Judy, based on what you said about having some old ones that seem to be just in tip-top battery shape, CR2232 batteries seem to last a long time. They're in computers all over the world, so they do seem to last a long time. But based on what you said, John, that they that in a year the timer goes off, it sounds to me like most likely that's a timer based expiration, oh, no, not necessarily it, it, a true end of battery life. That's true. And one of the reasons is they didn't engineer in a communication from the tile to the tile app that says we know this battery's at end of life. Now, having said that also, what would cause the end of life to vary? How many times you push the tile button? That's the first one because that makes noise. How many tiles you activate it or you, you use the tile app to make the thing produce the sound? That makes noise. That uses up a lot of battery power. Um, so it's, uh, ah, we've now got in, Bill, uh, Bill James has provided in the chat uh, the link to the four pack uh, on the tiles uh, website. Um, so it really depends on how heavily you've used that Bluetooth connection. And exactly. uh, frankly, one of the things, I have not done this, and it just occurred to me, one of the things you can do at the end of the year, because it uses a 12 month um, clock to remind you to replace the battery. At the end of the year, pull the battery out, put the battery back in and tell the app that you have put in a new battery <laughs> and see how much longer it is until it can't communicate with that tile anymore. Now, that's an experiment that takes a long time. I don't like experiments that take a long time because I've got other things going on in my life. I can't pay attention to it. Nonetheless, that's the only way I could recommend that might identify that a particular battery in my tile can last more than a year. Got it. Thank, okay, just two other things real quick. Um, uh, I'm gonna do the second one to Ray uh, next. Ray, I just wanted to mention that you had talked about um, how to identify music. I use the Google Sound Search app. I'm pretty sure it came with my phone or I was able to download it from the Google Play Store. I keep it on my desktop when I'm sitting in a restaurant with my wife. I hear a song, it's like, oh, what in the world is that? I'm watching TV, oh, what is that song? It's used in the background music of some show. I just tap that within moments. It's telling me who wrote the song, what version of the song it is, and if I wanna get the lyrics, I can do that. Okay, John, back to you. The 2020 Mate versus the 2023 Tile Pro with the changeable battery. I, I really don't like the idea of not being able to change the batteries. But if the Tile Pro has an extended range, would, you, would I be better off buying the 2023s or whatever that Tile Pro is date versus okay. the 2020s? The, the real issue on the Tile Pro, the little gotcha that I haven't mentioned yet is that it requires a subscription fee. And they do various things for that subscription fee. And one of them is send you a new battery when they think you need it. Um, Whether you want to or not, you have to have a subscription? I believe that's correct. But again, go, go to the Tile website and check it out if you're interested in Tile Pro. Um, mm -hmm. I've got one Tile Pro. Uh, I, offhand, I can't recall where I've used it. Um, it happens that the webcam I'm using is my camcorder and it's got a tile mate attached to it. I can see it right here. Um, but uh, I am not a fan of Tile Pro. They cost a lot of money. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank I, you. I just want to thank Kevin. You have given a whole new definition to multitasking. 
If, if you're in a restaurant and uh, eating and also participating, that is really outstanding. <laughs> I just finished. <laughs> and, and I might add that um, somewhere in the deep dark past, I went to law school and we had a habit of comparing summer jobs. And one of my friends in law school, he had a summer job for a, a, a San Francisco law firm. And his summer job was to go to a restaurant. Now they told him which restaurants to go to. We go to a restaurant, eat lunch and write down the songs that they were playing. Now, why were they doing that? Because they, their client was ASCAP. And they chose restaurants that failed to pay the ASCAP blanket fee, the license fee. And so what did they do? After they knew that these guys were playing songs that they shouldn't play, they sued them up on behalf of ASCAP. And after they filed maybe three or four lawsuits, guess what? Every other restaurant in the city found out and paid their ASCAP fees for the year. So he told me about that summer job, and boy, was I envious. Um, now, uh, the, the point is that with the modern tech that Kevin just outlined, you wouldn't even have to write down the song names. You could just record them, for instance. You could use a recording app on your phone. Or a, a, if you really had no idea what songs were being played, you could even use the apps like what Kevin used to identify them. So it can be used in various ways, depending on what your purpose is. Andy Kerrigan. Hi folks, again, thank you very much. Ray and John, two outstanding presentations. Uh, question for John, two questions actually. Uh, John, can both the tiles and the air tags Coexist on the same device. So, uh, for example, if on it's an iPhone, uh, if it's an uh, if it's an iPhone or an iPad, the answer is yes. You can have the Tile app installed. You can track tiles and you can track air tags. Yes. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking about sharing them with uh, with kids, where some have, you know, my son has an uh, an Android phone and I have an iPhone. If we're looking to track the same item, uh, well, that won't that won't work. That won't work. And the reason is you cannot use an Android phone to track air tags. You don't have a Find My app. Okay. So, okay. So tiles, yes, air tags, no. Okay. Yeah. Second quickie question. With these tiles or air tags, uh, GPS, you know, the location services and Bluetooth constantly running, have you noticed any appreciable impact on battery life? Actually, I've had the GPS running for even longer because of a hobby I pursue called geocaching. And there's app, okay. three apps on the phone that allow me to identify where the nearby geocaches are so I can find them. Um, so for me, it's been a no brainer to keep a GPS running. And I've done that ever since I had an uh, uh, a Samsung, what was the first Samsung I got? Galaxy S7, um, now on a Galaxy S20. Um, have I seen, I, I don't know how to answer the question because I didn't run for two days with no GPS and two days with the, I mean, with no location services and two days with the location services running. But, um, okay, well, it's nothing. I, it's nothing I think, major. well, let me comment. Okay. The big drain when you have a, a smartphone, the big drain is running multiple apps at the same time. Keep the number of apps you're running to a minimum. I actually taught a seminar on this for my local uh, computer club several months ago called Invisible Apps because uh, unless you know how to make them visible when you're not using them, you may, may not be aware that you're running 20 or 30 or 50 apps. On my original smartphone and iPhone 5, one day it started heating up. I did some research and found out you're running a lot of apps and it's really running down the battery. I had 64 apps running. I had no idea I had left that many running. I also learned how to shut them down. But the point is, don't run a lot of apps. Keep it to a minimum and your battery will last a lot longer, even if you're using Bluetooth and location services. Great, thank you very much. Carl. 
Unmute, please. Carl, you have to unmute. We can't hear you. Spacebar will do it if you just want to hold the spacebar down. Yeah, I tried that. It didn't work for me. Uh, I tried, um, first of all, I was trying to order it on discount, uh, deep discount, and I kept typing in either tile mate or tile or mate, and it never comes up with anything. Um, I don't know what to tell you. If you have access to the uh, chat in this meeting, Bill James posted a link that you can click on and will take you straight to the page where it offers the, no, that says mate slim. That does not say, uh, well, let me click on it. Let me see what I can get. No, I, no, I already ordered it. Thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that link does not give you access to a pack of four tile mates. It gives you access to a pack of two mates and two slims. I'm just curious why I couldn't, it wouldn't come up with anything because I tried trial made two words, one word, separate words, and it never come pops up with, yeah. you know, it's a search on there and it didn't work. I'm just curious why it didn't work. But I did order, thanks to Bill James, always coming through at the, for us guys. Drew, it's your turn. Okay. Um, I've been a tile mate customer for, I don't know, maybe 10 years or 15 years now. And uh, I have the wallet one and I have the pros. And the none of the tiles require a subscription, including the pro. The subscription gives you a couple of advantages that you get. Uh, one of them is annual battery replacement. Um, you pay for the subscription and they replace the batteries in all of your tiles um automatically so that regardless it doesn't matter whether the battery is dead or not you're prepaying twenty dollars a year for the service so they give you batteries for all your devices um secondly um the samsung tags which i guess weren't covered and the apple air tags both have a feature that the tiles currently don't have and that is support for ultra wideband. And that's in addition to Bluetooth. And ultra wideband is far more high tech than Bluetooth. And it's what's in the Apple uh, devices. And it's in the higher end Samsung. Samsung sells Bluetooth only and Bluetooth plus ultra wideband. Trick with the Samsung is that you can find any of their tags using any anyone that owns a Samsung phone, just like anyone that owns an iPhone becomes a, a finder for a tag. And so uh, what I've come to discover is I'm thinking that more people own Samsung phones than own any phone that run the tile software these days. And um, I'm finding it very difficult at airports uh, to locate tiles. Um, but the Samsung and the AirTags, my brother-in-law is an AirTag user and travels a lot. Um, he found his lost luggage in New York at the LaGuardia airport, uh, when he landed in Buffalo without his jacket. And, um, so when you're looking at, uh, tags, you want to look for the ultra wideband support. And secondly, on the Samsung phones, only two of their high-end model phones come with ultra wideband support. And that is the Ultra and the Plus in the, in the, in the galaxies. So those are things that you want to be careful of. Cool. Thank you so much. I, I have a comment about that since I've been using Samsung phones for a long time. Uh, Samsung has done a lot of interesting technology. I was unaware of the ultra wideband. But I will say I happen to know that the phone uh, versions you mentioned are very, very expensive. Uh, also, it's unclear how many prior Samsung phones could participate in a global search because most of them don't have ultra wideband. It also makes me wonder how the global searches for luggage work in the first place. And it occurred to me it may be that some of the luggage handlers 
have been encouraged to put the tile app or use find my uh on their phones they don't actually have to use it but right. that would allow them to participate in global searches right. right if they have an iphone it's built into the os and if you have any samsung galaxy smartphone will act as a locator phone um there's a feature built into the samsung operating system called smart things do you know when it was included um a few years ago at the least what i'm here's why i another way to to phrase it is when did they release their tracking devices the reason i mention it is i have a number i can't say i know how many but i have a number of people i know who are using samsung phones with very very old versions of the os because samsung doesn't allow you to upgrade indefinitely on the os on their older right. devices right. uh it was three ma uh, two major upgrades i believe is their policy um so it saying all samsung phones will participate in the search for the samsung tracking devices that can't possibly be correct John. what you need to do is if you have any model samsung even if it's a 400 dollars or 200 dollars samsung is look in your global app list for the program smart things and if your operating system has smart things then it will participate in the global discovery right john i'm it, pretty sure they put it out with the s10 because i got one as a promotional with the s10 okay richard jackson you're on Unmute, please. John Crow, thank you for your excellent presentation. Uh, could you repeat the names of the of the tiles, including the one that changed the batteries for twelve dollars? I think you could change the battery uh, because I looked on the site and I didn't see the the deals. If I knew the name of the okay, of the you tile. have to look for the warehouse sale. Um, now, I got an email from Tile, it's either late last night or very early this morning, that said they're having a warehouse sale and it gave me a button to click to go visit the web page. Okay. Um, now, having said that, let's see if I can... John, I put another uh, link out there. I think that's the correct one. That's for, oh, you mean, okay, let me take a yes. look at what you, what, all right, hang on. Let me come back to the meeting and let's see here. T made four pack 2020. Okay, I'll click on that. And yes, that took me to a four pack for $34.99. Um, so that link is in the chat. And those of you who have stuck around this long, I appreciate your willingness to stick around and Bill James has rewarded you. Uh, take a look at that link, click on it, and that'll take you directly to the page that will sell you a pack of four 2020 version tile mates, the kind that you can change the battery in, and it'll sell them to you for a, a unit price of less than $10. Thank you, Mr. James and Richard Bradford. It is your closing question for us. Yeah, a uh, comment about air tags and um, Android phones, would it not be possible to track them by logging into the Google browser uh, using the uh, Chrome browser and logging into iCloud.com? Uh, you can Android. you can certainly tra you can, can certainly track AirTags using that method, even if you do not have an iPhone. But you must. Yeah, but on an Android phone. Uh, uh, right on an Android phone, you can do that but you must register your AirTag through the Find My app in order for iCloud to be able to find it. Hmm. And it is possible to get it from a, an Android phone. And that's not possible, yeah. Uh, and just by the way, I want to say thank you for logging in from as far away as you are. You're in the beautiful place down under and I hope to visit someday. He's always one of the first people who registered registers because it's 
a good time for him when I'm sending things out. Yeah. By golly, that darn John Kennedy raised his hand. So he gets the last question. Yeah. Uh, the two the two links that we have, you know, you said that the first one, that wasn't the right one. Is is there anything wrong with getting two mates and two slims? Okay. Is this the, the, the key is what do you need? Okay. If you have a need for a slim and you have a, a, a need for a couple of slims and a couple of tile mates, that's a good link for you. Um, oddly enough, my, the place where I would use a tile slim ordinarily is a wallet. My wallet is metallic to prevent remote RFID sensing of my credit cards. So... I can't use a tile slim in my wallet. What would I do? Probably put a tile sticker on the outside. Um, but right now I haven't done that yet. So you have to ask yourself, what do you need? If you don't need a slim, don't buy it. If you do need a slim, that deal might be attractive for you. Thank you. And I have a question for Ray. Who does the accounting for all of the residuals? The streaming company itself. Well, the streaming company provides the data. Uh, if you're asking me who double checks it, I don't know. Uh, that would be a good question. Uh, I'm sure the artists are ad savvy enough and have advisors who will make sure that what they're providing is accurate. I would bet so too. And my, one of my daughters moved from uh, the Santa Clarita Valley to Thousand Oaks, that's LA County to Ventura County. And uh, my oldest grandson has a cat that uh, is an outside cat. The first thing he got was an air tag on his collar. And we're sitting around the table in the backyard and it's time for him to come home. Where is he? And he does his little thing and that you can't train cats, right? Right. That cat jumps <laughs> over the fence and into the yard and right over to where he's sitting. I'll tell Not you, I could have used cat. that, Judy. I could have <laughs> used that. We had a, a cat that would depart for two weeks at a time. Oh. And come to find out, once we got the phone number on the cat's collar, somebody called us. When the cat had been gone a week, it had crossed two major highways and gone to a place where a woman left milk on the back porch for her cat and our cat was mooching. <laughs> uh, but somebody, somebody who was, uh, you know, uh, felt ni uh, nice about the, somebody who was a cat fan, found the cat, found the collar, called us. Uh, it would have been so much easier if we'd had an air tag or a tile, as you have just pointed out. And a little girl who was visiting her grandma left a note on their front door saying, do you know your cat is out at night <laughs> and in our yard? And I thought that was quite nice of her. And they have, his parents have two cats. And one's a house cat, wouldn't be caught dead going outside, and the other one goes out on the patio. So it's only the one cat that needs to be tracked. Take us away, John, to outstanding presentations. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Ray, and thank you, John, again, for giving us some good knowledge and for giving us a good tip on saving some money today. So uh, we've already had some people. We should do what they do on the TV. We've already had this many things sold at this time. Thanks to John and thanks to Bill for finding the right link, the link for us. Now, that's great. We thank you all for being here, Bill, for helping out, Judy, for helping out. Uh, we thank you for t participating as part of your APCUG member benefit. 